Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem JSON deep equal. We're given two objects O1 and O2 and we want to check if they are deeply equal. What do we mean by deeply equal? Well, let's take a look at the example here. You can see we have two objects each with a key value of X that maps to a value of one where the one is a number, not a string. The same is true for Y. It maps to two in both objects. So these objects are identical to each other. The second example example, we have the exact same property. Both of them map y to 2 and x to 1. The difference is the ordering is a bit different, but we don't really care about the ordering at all. Think about it in terms of number sets. Like if we have a set of numbers, 1, 2, 3, and we have another set of numbers, 3, 2, 1, these are the exact same sets. We don't care about the ordering. We just care about the contents. Now, the third example is this, where X does map to null in both objects, and L maps to an array in both objects, but this one is an array of strings while the other is an array of numbers. So these are not deeply equal. They need to be exactly the same, not just the values, but also the types. And if you recall, three equal signs is what it takes in JavaScript to actually get deep equality. One deeply equal to the string one, in this case, will evaluate to false, whereas one with a double sign equal, equal to the string one is gonna be equal to true. Now I said order doesn't matter, but it does matter for arrays. So if we had like an array of one, two, three, and I had an array of three, two, one here, the order would matter in that case, obviously, because for arrays, of course, order matters. Objects, they don't necessarily matter because objects are essentially hash maps where the order is irrelevant. So before we even try to solve this problem, there are a lot of subtle things that you really need to understand about JavaScript. So let's do that. We know that types are going to be pretty important here. So let's actually review types. If I have an object like this where the values don't really matter, I'm just mapping the character A to the number one, and I try to log the type of this we can do that with type of operator and then just say a let's see what we get okay we get an object and it's not just object that's being printed here this is actually a string so if I check if this is equal deeply equal to the string object we're going to get true because that's what type of logs it logs a string and we can test out some other things let's get type of a number we could use a variable like i could have a variable const b equals one here and then log the type of that like this and we're going to get number or i could just pass in a number here like one and then we also get number so that's what i'm going to be doing and let's review the other ones let's pass in a boolean false what's going to be the type of this well of course boolean what about a string String ABC. Well, we get string again. In some languages, we do have something called a character, not a string, but in JavaScript, there is no concept of that. Everything is a string. What about a array? If I have B equal one, two, three, and I try to log that, what am I going to get? Is it a type of array? Nope. It's also object. That can be kind of confusing because remember, arrays in JavaScript, like this B that I drew over here, is equivalent to this, where we have zero as the key and one one as the value, one as the key and two as the value, two as the key and three as the value, because the index in this case is essentially the key. Yes, JavaScript is kind of weird, but we can get more precise. If we want to know whether this is an array or like an actual object, we can do something called array dot is array and call that on B and let's see what we get. Well, I have to fix this and we get true. It is an array, but if I call that on A, which is not an array, we're gonna get false. Cool, that's what we expect. And just to go over a couple edge cases, what if I have const C, but I never assign it to anything? We know that's undefined. So what would the type of that be? Okay, I shouldn't have done it with the const keyword. I'll do it with let and then rerun that and we do get undefined. Okay, that wasn't intentional, but probably something good that we learned. And lastly, if I set C equal to null, this is gonna piss you off. What's the type of that gonna be? It's gonna be an object. So knowing that it's gonna be a little tricky to solve this problem, but it's definitely possible. Okay, so now as we try to code this up, we know that objects actually can be recursive. Like a key A does not have to map to a primitive, nor does it even have to map to an array. We could actually map this to another object 
where the key of that is going to be maybe A again, and maybe that's going to also be mapped to an object, and it could keep going down like this. So objects can be recursive. So that kind of tells us that this function is also going to need to be recursive. And with recursive functions, we usually want to start with our base case. And the first thing I'm going to try is just checking if the type of these is unequal, because of course, if the type of these is unequal, then they can't possibly be equal. So that's a pretty easy one. We can just return false immediately in that case. And we could use the shorthand here because we're going to need a lot of these if statements. We could condense this to just like this, return false. If you want to do it that way, feel free, but I'm used to doing it this way because the style guides that I've followed at Google and other places encourage you not to use that shorthand because it can kind of be error prone. You might think you're using Python for a second, but continuing with the problem. Okay. We know that the types of these are going to be the same and it could be an object. It could be an array or it could be a primitive value. The primitive is going to be the easiest case. So let's start with that. If type of O1, one of these objects is not equal to object and we would have to use string here, then that means probably the other one is also not equal to an object because clearly they do have the same type if we got to this point. And if one of them isn't an object, that must mean they're both not objects. So they're primitives. And in that case, we just want to check if they are deeply equal. We don't have to do recursion in this case. So we just check is O1 equal to O2. If they are, we'll return true. Otherwise we return false. Okay, now is the part where we want to kind of go recursive. There's going to be two cases that I'm going to be discussing. One is, are we dealing with arrays or are we dealing with objects? Mainly because we know iterating through these is going to be slightly different. So let's start with arrays. Are we dealing with arrays? Let's check. Is array of object one? So basically, is that an array or is the second one an array? The reason I'm doing or here is because in the other case, in the else block, I'm going to expect that both of these actually are objects. And that's pretty important because JavaScript is pretty weird. And I'll show you a really good example of that right now. Suppose I had an array like this, where just one value is undefined. And suppose I had an object over here where the key is, you know, a and the value is one. It doesn't really matter, but this is an object clearly. And clearly these are not the same. They're not deeply equal. Suppose we knew that a is an array. So then we just started looping through every value in array using some loop, right? Like let i equal zero. And then we just increment that and try to loop through it. And we would try at the beginning is a at index zero equal to b at index zero. Now, of course, we would expect this loop to return false. They should not be deeply equal, but clearly the value here is going to be undefined. So A is going to be undefined. B, when we try to access this key value, what it's going to try to do is convert this to a string and check, does that key exist anywhere in here? It does not. So what is that going to return? Usually it does undefined. Let's log it to confirm and running it. We see we get a true. So if we tried looping through these with a loop, we would evaluate these to be deeply equal. That's a problem. So that's another thing we have to account for. And the way I'm going to do that is by using the string function. If we weren't sure that both of these are arrays, we could call string on a and I'll log it to show you what that's going to get us. And we get undefined. If I call the same thing, on B, we are going to get something different. We're going to get object. So this is just going to be a way for us to easily check that an array is not equal to an object because we know the type of operator is not enough. The type of both of these is an object. But if I change, let's say a to one, two, then we get this. If I even had an object here that is pretty much the exact same as a up above like this, zero maps to one, one maps to two. We know these are not deeply equal, but they are pretty much identical like if we were to loop through these. But again, when I log both of these, you're going to see that, yeah, they're not going to be equal. So by comparing the string representation of these two, we're going to easily be able to know that they are not the same. And we have to do that because remember, type of is not enough. So now getting back to the code, we know at least one of these is an array, but we don't know that both of them are arrays. One thing we can check is the string representation of O1 
is not equal to the string representation of O2. In that case, we want to return false. And since the string representations are equal, we actually don't even have to check the lengths and compare them because at that point, we pretty much know the lengths are going to be the same as well. You might think, isn't this enough to tell if the two arrays are also equal? Not quite, and let me quickly show you why. Here, I clearly have two different objects, but when I convert them to strings, look what happens. We get an array of an object, right? So the string representation isn't gonna tell us like the inner details of each object if it's an array of objects. So back to the code. Now we actually have to do exactly that. We have to deeply check each attribute of each array. So first thing is just to iterate through both of the arrays, which we know are going to be of the same length. So we say i is equal to zero and i is less than the last index and i plus plus. And instead of just doing a naive comparison between o1 at index i and o2 at index i, we have to check if these are deeply equal. They could be objects, right? A comparison is obviously not enough. So that's where the recursive step comes in. We call our recursive function passing in O1 at index I and O2 at index I. And if this returns false, then we have to immediately return false. And if it doesn't return false, then we just have to keep continuing. If we never end up returning false in this if statement, then at some point we want to return true. So I'm going to go ahead and do that out here outside of the if else. So there we have our result. Now to handle the other case, by the time we get here, we know both of these are objects, real objects, not arrays. So it should be as easy as just checking each key value pair. But before we do that, let's actually get the lengths of both of these objects so that we guarantee they do have the same number of keys because if they don't, then we want to return false. And we can get the number of keys in an object with the object dot keys method passing in 01. This actually gives us a array of the keys and we can get the length of that array and then we can compare it to the other one, 02 dot length. And if they're not equal, then we can immediately return false. Otherwise, we actually now have to start iterating through the object. We really just want to go through the keys and we know we can do that with the in operator. So this will go through every key in an object, in this case, 01. We only need to go through one of the objects because we already know they're the same length. So when we call R deeply equal on 01 with this key and 02 in this key, we know that this key is a valid key of object one, but it might not be a valid key of object two. That's perfectly fine because if it's not, this is going to end up being undefined. And we know we do have some cases that can take care of that. Probably this first one, if the types are unequal, then we would immediately return false. So we know that's going to be taken care of. So we can then just pretty much copy what we did up above in the array case. If they're not deeply equal, then we know we can immediately return false false. If they are equal, then we're going to keep going through the loop until it's finished. And then out here, we're going to return true. This is almost the entire code, but an easy thing to forget is that null is technically an object. But when you call object.keys on null, it throws an error. I know because I forgot that case. So the easiest thing to do here is just add another conditional, which checks is either of these objects null, because if either of them is null, we can pretty much immediately immediately check if they're deeply equal. So if O1 is equal to null or O2 is equal to null, we know that at least one of these is null. So therefore the other must be null for them to be equal. So we're just going to return O1 is equal to O2. So if one of them is null, both of them should be null. And then we return true. If they're not both null, then we immediately return false. No need to do any recursive steps. So this is the entire code. Let me go ahead and run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.